Sziasztok! Ez Hello! This is the 12th chapter of the Crystal Clear Actonix video series, which is the fourth and final video of the chapter called Debugging, Troubleshooting in the program. If you look around the studio, you will discover an apparent bug. There is a telescope behind Szabolcs. What excites me is whether this is a real bug or if it is somehow connected to the curriculum. Gergő, you act as if you don't know that telescoping or astronomy is one of my hobbies and that's why I brought this telescope into the studio. Of course it is related to the world of microcontrollers. Not with this telescope, but with professional telescopes, the necessary telescope movement resulting from the apparent movement of the sky and the adjustment of the clock angle is usually done by microcontrollers in a very professional way. Now let's go back to the program we left behind in our third video, as we want to continue developing it further in this video. We will put one more twist into our program, let's follow the instructions. We'll control the LED brightness with the push button connected to the PB0 pin. To do this, you need to initialize pin 0 on port B as input, and we also need to connect the button to this pin. Let's look at how this circuit works, as we may need push buttons later too. The push button circuit consists of a pull-up resistor, a switch, a series resistor and a capacitor, which implements a low-pass RC filter. We will see later what it is and why we need it. The most important of these is the pull-up resistor and the switch. Let's look at them separately. In our figure, instead of the switch, we can see a gap and the wire on the left and right hand side of the diagram respectively. The circuit on the left shows the state when the button is not pressed, while the circuit on the right shows the pressed state. In the figure, we can follow the voltage change on the microcontroller pin. When we are not pressing the button, there is virtually no current flowing through the resistor, so there is no voltage drop across it, that's why the supply voltage appears on the microcontroller pin. When the button is pressed, then current starts flowing, so the voltage drops to near zero. You might also wonder how to connect the button so that it is the other way around. The remaining two components create a low-pass filter. This means that the resistor and capacitor are acting as a short circuit for all fast changing signals, but in the case of DC, or slowly changing signals, it is as if they weren't there. This is called a filter. This is needed because the internal mechanism of the push button tends to bounce during key pressing. Bouncing is a rather unfavorable behavior for us. The contacts close and release several times in rapid succession, which would register as more button presses on the microcontroller, even though we only wanted to press the button once. We show this phenomenon in a figure. These so-called high-frequency components can be filtered out with our low-pass RC filter, because they are fast-changing signals and the filter will not let them through. Now let's go back to our program, open the third program of chapter 12, the 3 LED push button project. Previously I promised that using this software we will be able to adjust the brightness of the LED using the push button and not by changing the program code. However, in practice it doesn't work. What went wrong? Why is nothing happening when pressing the button? To find out, we will learn about one of the most useful features of the debug environment. We can mark certain lines in our program and execution will stop when the microcontroller reaches them. When this happens, we can view the current value of our variables and registers. Such markings are called breakpoints. We can place them by clicking on the grey bar on the left hand side of the program. If the placement is successful, a red circle will appear indicating that the program will stop running when this line is reached. But where should we stop the program? Let's look at whether it notices the button press, so put a breakpoint in the section which tests it, that is line 36. When pressing the button, the program should stop at the breakpoint, but unfortunately this is not the case. 
The first thing we can suspect here is the hardware failure. In this case, if we have built the circuit correctly. It's worth checking if everything is properly connected on the breadboard. The easiest way to do this is to measure the voltage using a multimeter on the microcontroller spin to which the push button is attached. When the button is not pressed, you should see a value close to 5 volts on the multimeter and close to 0 while the button is pressed. If you do the measurements, you will see that the results are not what you'd expect. Perhaps the pin behaves differently than we would like. For example, it drives the point we want to measure as an output. But where's the problem? Think about what happens to the ports and pins in the software. In the first step, it is initialized, and then we look at its value in each loop. In this case, it's not so difficult to find out which part of the theory does not work properly in practice. Let's look at the initialization code snippet once more. The DDRB equals FF line may catch our eyes. This sets each bit of the DDRB register to 1, which means that each pin is configured as output. Here's the problem. Write it over to DDRB equals 0. Now, all pins of port B are configured as inputs. Let's restart the program by leaving the breakpoint in place. You can see that if you press the button now, the program will be stopped on the right line. You can view the current value of the duty variable by dragging the mouse over any occurrence of it in the code, or you can set its watch in watch window. In this way, the correct operation of the program can be verified. When the value of the duty variable is less than the value of the counter, the LED is lit. As a further observation, it can be noted that the value of the duty variable will be increased by 1 at every button press. The interesting, first perhaps incorrect part comes after 9, because the value of the variable will be 10. This is not a problem, the next code snippet will take effect and will reset the value of the variable. This can be checked by stepping the program. Hopefully, these few simple examples shown have successfully highlighted software debugging processes and its tools. We will also implement more complex software later, and these tools might become useful companions for development, programming and debugging. This was the final video of the 12th chapter of Crystal Clear Electronics. You can download the curriculum in PDF format from crystalclearelectronics.eu or in Hungarian from kristaltistaelektronika.hu. You can find a mobile app for Android and iOS platforms under the same name. Follow us on Facebook and see you soon in the next videos. Bye! Bye-bye!